so I have to car. Um, my name is Walton Sayana. I'm Lynn Burkey, and I currently have less than $50 saved up for university in my account. <laughs> However, we're representing a young entrepreneur here today who has more than $5,000 saved in his account, is running a company in which he gets substantial income from, and on top of that all, he also has full scholarship to Simon Fraser University. Mr. Oliver Smith, however, is still facing a dilemma. Okay, so we'll be doing a few things for you today. First of all, we will be doing a character analysis we'll, where we'll be talking about who Oliver Smith is, and then we talk about what his current situation is and the crisis he is facing. After we talk about the crisis he is facing, we'll talk about the three alternatives we are recommending to Mr. Smith. And after, um, before we do those three alternatives, we of course will do the numerical analysis, which it's just about his current situation, where he's spending his money, his expenses, the basic um, the expenses he has. And then after we talk about the three alternatives, we will end off with recommending one of the three alternatives to Mr. Smith and then implementing it into his daily lifestyle to see how will he work around that and how we can, of course, make his financial situation better. So when getting to know Oliver Smith, we need to understand that he possesses all of the, all of the qualities that uh, makes a person success, successful in the business world. He's heavily involved in school. He's athletically involved because he's on his high school basketball team. He's also um, financially involved because he helped captain his uh, business strategy case competition. At 18 years old, Oliver Smith is also uh, the president of a popcorn company, which he calls Pop Culture. He makes approximately $7,500 as his first paycheck, and he's getting a lot of benefits out of it. The groundbreaking circumstances that in this is that because he was so heavily involved in his community, as well as in his schoolwork, is that he has been offered a scholarship for four years to pay tuition, as well as all finances paid in, um, in books and such. So what's groundbreaking is that he doesn't know whether or not he should uh, continue with his business through thick and thin, or whether he should pursue business school and further his education. Okay. All right, so we're going to be going into a little bit about the numerical analysis about his current stats. So right now, his money is basically going into two different things. One of them is his business, and the other one is his own pocket. So we'll be talking a little bit about his business first. So as you can see here, his sales are approximately $30,000. Um, this is yearly, by the way. It's $30,000 in revenue. And then his costs for um, his production costs are approximately $18,000. And that's just basically running the company. Here we have all the expenses that it takes to run his company, and it comes to a total of $12,000. Notice how the expenses will include his own personal um, income of $7,500. Now, although you may say, okay, he's getting paid a lot, I mean, I don't even make that much, and I don't, uh, but like he's, he gets paid quite a bit, but still he has a business income of $0. So that means basically that his income, his the way that his business is now, it is not set for the long term, it's set for the short term. So in order to make it set for the long term, he needs to put in an, an investment of $30,000 to actually work. So in regards to his own personal finances, his monthly income is $625. And from it, um, his, these are all his list of expenses, his basically living expenses. He does live at home, so that explains why his rent is so small. But it has a total of $600. And if you see here, the extra dollars is $25, which he puts into his savings account. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we have three alternatives to Oliver Smith's financial situation. Now, the first alternative we're offering to Oliver Smith is to, con is to pursue a post-secondary education. Now, for those that know, an education is extremely important. It can take you many places, whether it be an education, an elementary education, a high school education, or in this case, a post-secondary education. But Oliver Smith, he doesn't want to pursue an education. He's really caught up with his pop culture business and he wants to pursue that. He wants to go far with it. However, he needs to realize that pursuing an education is greatly important because it'll create many opportunities for him. Now with an alternative, of course, comes its pros and cons. Now in this case, we can see that one of the pros in Oliver Smith's situation is that he's been offered a Simon Fraser University scholarship. And what the scholarship is covering is basically four years worth of tuition and books. Now that is a huge opportunity and of course right now we can see that he is taking it for granted. So what we are recommending him, recommending to him is to use that Simon Fraser University scholarship and go pursue an education. And once he pursues an education, 
he can get a degree in business or finance or marketing, just whatever he plans to do. And of course, once he has that degree, he of course has the skills to go further on and pursue that business of his pop culture and of course do successful in that business. And once we're in university and we're trying to pursue a degree, we can get in contact with a lot of professors or a lot of people that are in that business world and that have connections. And one thing you need to realize is that if you're planning to pursue a business, it is greatly important to have connections, to have those networks where you can talk about um, how other businesses are doing, how you can do better, how you can market your own business, and like you can see the ups and downs in the business world. And of course, that is greatly important. We, and as I've said before, he can incorporate that education into his own business because by then he'll have the skills and abilities to do so. Lastly, he is a very lucky child because his parents are there to financially support him. They have been saving up for his education and most people, like once they're in university, they move out, they're kind of on their own, they're getting student loans, they're doing this. But we can see that Oliver Smith, first he has that scholarship which pays for his tuition and books for four years. Then his parents are there to financially support him, which means they can cover the cost of residence. So he doesn't even have to worry about student loans, or if he does work, um, plan to get one, it won't be as high as most students. But the con with this alternative is that he's not passionate about pursuing education. He wants to go on with his business, he wants to expand that pop culture and do good, um, do good in that, but at the age of 18, I don't think that's the best um, Thing you should do. Pursuing an education is important because it creates a lot of opportunities. Maybe at the end, like in a couple of years, maybe he doesn't want to do that business. Then what's he left with? He's what, 25, 26, and then he doesn't have a degree. What is he going to do at that age if his business doesn't work out? So we can see that, of course, like pursuing that education is important. What um, Oliver Smith also fears is that with his if he plans to go to post-secondary, his business will start to fade and of course he won't be able to keep up with it because he'll be moving away because right now he is settled in Cameroon, Alberta, but then for university of course he's moving all the way to BC. And then the last con, well, I don't know, most people are excited to move out of their house, but for him it may be like moving out of the family, going and living on residence, being on your own. It might be a huge shift for him and that of course may be um, something that will negatively affect him. The second uh, opportunity that we have proposed for Oliver is that he he um, he focuses primarily on his own business. So the first thing that we need to focus on is the money that he needs in order for his business to actually start up and get going. And so the price for that is thirty thousand dollars. He plans to get this money from grants, GoFundMe, donations from his community. Um, uh, we've looked up his the city that he lived in, and that's Camrose. And the population of that city is $18,000. One of the pros of living in small cities, such as Regina, is that it's often a very tight-knit community. So um, because of that, we have a series of pros, pros that revolve around that. So one of these is that because it's such a small community, you're going to have a lot of loyalties. Meaning that people are going to want to stick with your business, and oftentimes they won't sway away, and there's not going to be much competition either. Um, the good thing about um, a small community is that it's easy to make a name, and it's also easy to expand. And so if he does have minimal competitors, then he isn't often facing a lot of burdens or a lot of worries. If he focuses a lot on his business, he ultimately comes out as more of a man who um, learns from his experiences rather than sitting in front of a textbook. So he could learn as he experiences things as well as he struggles. If you know a, a minimal amount of business, business even, then you know that the road to success is not one without potholes. And so ultimately, there's going to there's gonna be two outcomes of him focusing on his business. It's either going to be that his business is going to flourish, or it's just going to go in a downward spiral. Another con that we have to focus on is because one of the cons of living in a small community is that there's not a lot of people who are going to be business focused around him. There's going to be his friend, who he's also made a partner, and he's going to help him in the business. But because there are minimal connections, he doesn't have easy reaching outside his small community in Canada. In this last alternative, we tried to extract as many benefits from both as we could. So what we said was that he would go to business, he would go to school in Surrey, and while he's gone, he would have one of his trusted friends or family, remember his family's school, fill the entrepreneurs. He can ask one of them to take over his business for him and let him get most of the revenue while he will take only a little bit while he's in school. Now remember, while he's in school, he has help from his parents and he has full scholarship, so he has very minimal amount of expenses that he needs to pay off by himself. So what he can do is that he can get a part-time job, and with this part-time job, he can use this money to invest into his business, the $30,000 that he needs. So 
So if you see here, he needs to make $30,000 and we he had an on-hand investment of $5,000, but he wanted to go to Thailand with his friends, which required him to pay $3,500, but it's no worry because we worked it out for him. So even if he takes out the $3,500, he will have $1,500 left. And he will, take, and he will take that out, so he only needs to pay $28,500. So with a part-time job, we said we calculated it that this 11.25 is the new minimum wage for people in BC. So we multiply that by 196 work weeks within the four years, and we also took into account all the break weeks and how much time will approximately take him to find a job, and that gives a total a new income of $35,280. So from that, he will have actually $6,780 left over. So you can use this to apply it to his uh, business even more, to lay down an even more solid foundation. Okay, so now it comes down to the recommendation and implementation for the plan for Mr. Smith. Now, as his financial advisors, we chose to go with Alternative 3. And that's only because Alternative 3 allows Mr. Smith to pursue an education and then, of course, pursue his business as well after he has his degree. So as I mentioned before, once he does get his degree, he has those skills to, of course, pursue a successful business, a business that, of course, can help him in the long term. And an education, of course, will help him in the long term. Right now, Mr. Smith isn't thinking well, and he thinks that if he just goes straight to the business, it will be really beneficial. But, of course, in a couple of years, what if that business doesn't do great? And that, of course, isn't helping him in the long term. But once he has that degree, a long-term benefit we can see is that with that education, if I, if he doesn't want to pursue that business, he can do something else with that education as well. So that education helps like you all, like basically all your life. And of course, people then go back to university to go pursue another degree or another ma like master's or something. And of course, he can enhance on that education. Now, one thing that stood up to us as financial advisors from yesterday's keynote speaker, Rachel, she said this, and I'll quote it, um, I always believe that you should follow your passion, but after watching a TED talk, you should incorporate your passion in everything you do. And in this case, that's exactly what we want Mr. Smith to do. We want him, his passion of pursuing a business to be incorporated into his education. We want him to go pursue that education so it could help him with his business later on. So to make this work out, he needs, there needs to be heavy cooperation between him and his parents. So his parents need to help him pay for all those residence fees. And although I may be somewhat financially burdensome to them, they do have some money left aside, so it shouldn't be too bad. On Mr. Smith's side of the park, he needs to have adapt, adapt to the new environment, obviously. He's moving to a completely new place. Surrey is a lot more bigger than Camrose. On top of it, he needs to learn to live alone and manage his own expenses. So he doesn't have very good budgeting strategy, which is why I would suggest things like Mint. Oh, and there's plenty of financial advisors in universities that you can also go to if he needs to do that. Um, furthermore, he also needs to make sure that he's not spend that he's like working that those jobs. Obviously, right? He's looking from a different point of view because he used to be a businessman. He was running the company, and now he's going to be working under someone else's company. So we said that see this is somewhat beneficial because now he's going to have a completely new perspective as to what it takes to make a company really work. So this is going to be very beneficial to him when he actually runs the company himself. And hopefully, if Mr. Smith does take in all of our tips, he will become very financially successful in the future. Okay, so to clarify the recommendation, so you are recommending that he accepts the scholarship, that he does go to Thailand, his parents pay half, he pays half out of his TFSA. While he's in Simon Fraser going to school, he's going to have one of his trusted business partners slash friends running the Lockmore business at its current operations without new investment. And while he's in this school, he's also going to be working a part-time job. Yes. Okay. What uh, what kind of hours would he be working in his part-time job again? Sorry, I... We said he'd do 16 hours a week, which is kind of what our average was. So we said that this is reasonable for him. I mean, knowing that he's like pursuing a post-secondary education as well. So 16 hours is pretty reasonable with the seven day week. He could only work weekends or if he wants, he can work Friday night. So we thought 16 hours was pretty reasonable. And in order to reach the goal, because he wanted $30,000 as the um, to start up that business or to do much better, um, we knew that 16 hours made him $35,000 with 6,000 left over. So we thought it was pretty reasonable. So it's not a huge load on him either. So when you take a look at 
the money that he's making from a part-time job, and I guess the, this is kind of two questions. So the first part of the question is, if he's going to be working a part-time job, does it make sense for him to do something different or the same thing? Like, if he's working 16 hours a week, would it make sense for him to spend that 16 hours on pop culture? And why would you decide a part-time job over pop culture? Well, again, he's working in a... Pop culture is actually his company name. So he's not going to be working in pop culture, he'll be working in Surrey, so part of a different company. And we said he should, well, we were thinking that he should be more explorative with his kind of what he wants to work under. Because, it's, I mean, at this age, especially 18, it's not too harmful to kind of see how other businesses work, right? Like, for example, if my sister used to work at Staples, right? So she can kind of see the inward, how does Staples work, why is Staples so successful? Like, I was running Staples as like a millionaire, right? So obviously he can kind of look up to these people and kind of see how it works, right? So this will be very beneficial if he wants to start his business. And, and the thing is, pop culture right now, he only um, works at it in the evenings and on weekends only. So it's not like an 8 to 5 business for his. And he'll continue doing that while in BC? Well, his friend will take over for the time he is gone for the four years, so he can pursue that education on his. And then when he comes back, he will take pop culture again. And then, because he already has all that education behind him, he has the connections, Pop culture will go from just being like that zero income company to having, because he invested at $30,000 plus a lot of education, it will completely flourish and boom. And by the time he gets back, because right now the population is what, 18,000 people, so by the time four or five years he comes back, the population is going to be much greater. And because he's going to be in BC as well, and he'll be looking at the lifestyle there, so if he plans to, he can expand his business into BC as well. And furthermore, now that I'm thinking about it, if you consider Camrose is really close to both Edmonton and Calgary, and they're like really big com uh, populations in um, Alberta, obviously, right? So if he wants, he could just stop pop culture in that, sorry, play in that um, Camrose, and then eventually expand it to both Edmonton and Calgary, right? And then he already has those reviews behind him in Camrose where it's small, and then when he goes to those big cities, he already has that advantage to those other companies that are already starting there. So it'll make him a huge, give him a huge competitional advantage. It's all about making connections because right now what he's focused on is making money and of course that's not how it always works. You need to make connections in order to make money and of course you need that education. At 18, it's kind of that age where you're like, do I want to go to university? I've been in school for what, 13 years? Do I want to pursue like four or five more years of school? Like, should I do that? So at this point he needs to come to that realization that an education is important because as I've said before, like. Once he's 25, what if the business isn't working? What, what's he going to do? Is he going to work at McDonald's, like a $10, $11 job? Of course, that's not something that's going to benefit him in the long term, whereas an education would. So really, you're getting at more of the risk then of having a degree and having that reduce the risk of the pop culture business not being a long-term thing. That's what you're getting at. Can you clarify that? So the, you're essentially saying that um, the degree allows them to have an option once he's done the degree if pop culture doesn't succeed. Exactly, because we so, wanted to look at it in a long-term thing, because you, you never know about businesses. If it's succeeding right now, you don't know if it'll succeed in four years or five years. So, of course, like he's thinking short-term, we want to think long-term for him. Uh, so it's my natural advisors. I don't think it'll time because of the I'm just curious what how you guys think, uh, just with his, knowing his passion and his values and that type of thing, and, and he seems to be very, uh, the pop culture is a big part of him. Uh, how do you think he will react to uh, uh, kind of shifting that to a, a, a partner or someone running the business and kind of taking a step uh, back and if that was considered. The reason he initially added a partner was because because his business was so, so successful, he had to introduce, in, to introduce another player. So ultimately, he could sort of run pop culture from BC, but it would be more ideal if someone close to him was um, running it firsthand because his family will probably also be there. They could also take a look at it and ultimately it would still be good. And he comes from a family of entrepreneurs, so that's Oh, that's that was five minutes. Do you have any last question? Good job. Thanks a lot, Julia. Thank you.